show you guys my Excel spreadsheet. I know we talk about this a lot, but I've got some questions how I like format and stuff and put some equations in. All of this is really simple, so you should be able to do it on your own real easily if you want to manipulate some numbers and stuff. So, um, I thought there was something else I was going to say about this. I, I know we, we talk about this Excel spreadsheet a lot. It's kind of where all my information is. It's not magical or anything, but uh, it's like I've been getting more questions talking about it. So, just banging out a nice short video talking about it. I have here my home page. Um, this used to have like hyperlinks to, to things, but I no longer do that. Um, I don't. I just. I thought it was too much. So the first tab is actually my investments. These are the stocks I have. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to format it or how I format and stuff in a second. I guess that's the main thing people want anyway, so let's do that first. Let's do Foot Locker. I was actually looking at this, so in one column I'll have like the actual thing, you know, the ticker. Here I have the date. I What I did was actually just went over here and, you know, put the date in. And obviously, you just gotta make sure the format's right. Price. You can actually use this equation to equals. Actually, I'll type it out because it's kind of. Uh, Awesome type of equals Google Finance, enter. Then you get this, you got function. Click on the cell you want, that's the ticker. It knows to read the ticker, do comma, the two dots, and we want it to look for price. Close parentheses, enter. Boom, there's the price. Same thing for the market cap. Google Finance, then we want the FL, the market cap is what we're looking for. It doesn't work if you do like space market cap. Um, it doesn't work market capitalization, whatever. It doesn't work. I tried it, but um, yet yeah, the market cap I divided by a million, so we get four billion. Just makes it a little bit easier. These are really the only two big equations we're going to use. But then I input the revenue just from Yahoo Finance. However, if you see this number, yet yeah, these numbers are wrong. From what I've seen. Um, because if you go to Foot Locker's actual balance or actual SEC filing or their financial statements, they they have basically no debt. It's like eight, I think eight is eight million is their debt. So this is just wrong. So be careful where you get the information from. However, um, where is I going with that? All this or most of the information is just manually put in. Um, let me see something. I okay, don't have one. Like if I were. The only equations you'll see. So, revenue growth, operating margin, and net income margin are the only three equations that I'm actually using. So, for the revenue growth, okay, I'll just type it out. Um, so, we do equals. We want the first year, or I guess we want the parentheses, right? We want actually the new year minus the old year, close the parentheses, and we want that difference divided by the why does it say 2017? <laughs> Divided by the old year. And that's going to give us the percent increase from 2007, 2018 to 2019. Um, and, the, and then once you get that, like if I didn't have the equations here, you know, you just highlight it, drag it, then you get the equations here. They just fill it in by themselves. Um, so that's the revenue growth. It's the same equation for free cash flow growth. Almost all of the growth equations are just going to do the new value minus the older value divided by the old value. And that's going to give you the growth. If we wanted to see how much it could err, I guess it's the same thing. It's just the absolute value of the difference of the two years. Um, that's basically it. For the margins, it's actually even simpler though, so let's just delete all of these. Oops, what I do? I'll hit end. For the margins, if we delete these, um, all this is is the revenue, or operating income, divided by the revenue. That's going to give us what percentage the, the operating income is relative to the revenue. And we can just drag that across and fill it in. It fills it in for us. Same thing with net income. It's the same equation. Just use the net income divided by the revenue. And all of these are just values that I think are important. That's why I'm looking at them. I'm 
Um, you can obviously do whatever you want. Um, okay, well, actually, I'll finish this one up, and then I'll move to a newer one, actually. Uh, three, let's go to... Do stack, do I want to do stack? Let me see. Even this one could be decent. Not a little too dumb.
divided by the average of the last three years, so literally one, two, three, and then divided by three. Make sure you get the parentheses, and then that's it. I guess I can do it really quick because I like typing on this keyboard. So dividends multiplied by the number of current shares. I have to divide that by two parentheses. This free cash flow plus this free cash flow plus this free cash flow. Close parentheses divided by three close parentheses equals 58 percent. Pretty awesome. Oh, well, um, how do I get this over here? Um, I guess yeah. What I want to do is I want to see the average of the last couple of years. So actually, before we do that, you can literally do equals average, um, and then we're gonna highlight, and then close the parentheses, and then I actually, actually able to do that. That gives us the average for all these years. However, I don't want to include this one year here. So that's column F. So we're gonna take out the G, but the F because this is a very weak year. I don't think it has relation to. I don't want to put it in the model basically. Then two two seven. I basically just take equals this times this, and then boom. So this way, if I want to change this, I change it that. Getting down here, I just did this. This cell equals the price up there equals the market cap, which was up up top. And then uh, this is the market cap. So if I want to figure out the price of the stock, the equation is it's just a proportion. So this times this divided by, um, yep, this, sorry. So that times that divided by that, it's just, it's just a proportion, and that's going to give me $57. That's the value that this free cash flow model is giving it. This is the current price of the stock. So all pretty useful stuff. Again, I try to make it as bare bones and basic as possible because I'm just here to understand it. I'm not here to, like, show off or anything, you know. I'm just, I want to use something that I'm actually going to use, or create something I'm actually going to use. Let me go through, so, I did do some conditional formatting stuff here, um, it's not that important, I think three, four, no, maybe not that one, two, there, uh, never mind. I did something where, like, it was just conditional formatting. These cells actually are just, uh, color-coded. Like I just put the color in it. I don't have any like equations in there to like change it. Uh, I guess you could do that, but I don't know how important that is. Uh, let's see if I have anything else. Um, got my small cap page. These are my targets. I haven't updated this in a while. I think that's really all. Uh, let me go back to, uh, I guess, oh, I didn't mention the three-year PE, but it's the same thing as this, basically. Um, so a three-year PE could be the price divided by the earnings per share, or I, I like to do this because more easily, market cap divided by the net earnings. And since we already have the market cap and all the net incomes, and I don't have the EPS here, I mean, okay, so we could get the EPS, I'll just show you guys how we could get that really quick. But let's put this number back, so we do equals the market cap, then we're going to divide that by the three-year average PE. So we actually need two parentheses, so we need this net income plus this net income plus this net income. Uh, and that's divided by three, the close parentheses. That gives us the three-year average PE. If we wanted the earnings per share, could do is take the earnings, so net income divided by the shares, and let's make some more decimals, and we could just move that over, that's the EPS, I thought this number was a little bit, this should be 466, I know, maybe 466, I thought that should be something else, but anyway, wait, they earned seven dollars, and Oh, I think they sold something that went that year, so it's a little high. Um, but yeah, that's like EPS, and then yeah, if you want the PE, this is not a good way to do it, but like, what, what, if the current price, what the earnings per share, I guess it goes off some decimals, there are way too many. Two decimals is fine, then drag it, uh, oh, okay, that's a good time to do this, so if we want to lock that cell in the place, I think we just add a dollar sign, is that it? 
yep, 172, yep. Um, so at today's current price, the PE in 2020, 13, then 11, yeah, it's not the best way to view the stock, but just saying it's possible. Um, I delete all that because I don't really want that. Let's get rid of the column. I will put the drum button. Delete row. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I do all my stuff. It's not super complex. Oh, this video is definitely a lot longer than I thought. I feel like I always do that. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you know, the Google Finance one's pretty important. It updates every 20 minutes though, so it's not super accurate, but it's fine for, you know, I'm not trading out of it. I'm just analyzing stuff, I'm doing some type of average, getting this information correct though is kind of important. Sometimes I rush and mess up. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know, because um, if you guys have any questions or things I think I should add, I think I, this is all the stuff that I kind of want to look at, but maybe there's some other stuff that I'm missing, or maybe some functions that could make this equations and stuff a lot more easily, easily done, but yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon.